Hello everyone. In our last video, we created this integration to get all the suppliers from ERP using the REST API. And then we stored the supplier details in a CSV file. Also, we used the different query parameters like queue and limit. Now in this video, I'll update those suppliers that we are getting from the REST API. So if you didn't watch that video, please do watch first. You can find the link in the description. Now before update the suppliers, I will add one more condition in the query parameter queue. So for that, I'll open the map of get suppliers from ERP. Here I will expand the query parameters and I'll click on the queue. Here you can see the suppliers are already filtered using these two conditions, which are business relationship equal to spent authorized and tax organization type equal to corporation. Now I want to fetch the suppliers those will meet these conditions as well as the suppliers must be created after 1st Jan 2025. So for this, we have to add the condition of creation date. And if I go to the REST API page, you can see this is the REST endpoint that we have used in this integration to get all the suppliers. Now how we will find the page that we also discussed in our last video. Here you can see the query parameter Q. If you click on the Q, you can see one attribute creation date is there. So I'll copy this attribute and in the expression, I'll provide a semicolon to add the creation date condition and write creation date greater than 1st Jan 2025. And you have to use this date format where first of all, you have to mention date, then time and after that UTC for the time zone. Now save this, now validate. Now I will update a particular field of these suppliers that will get in this integration. And for that we have to find the supplier update REST API endpoint. So I will go to the REST API page again. And under the suppliers you can see update one supplier. So I will click on this. And this is the endpoint to update a particular supplier. Here you have to mention the supplier ID for which you want to update any attribute. So that means by providing the supplier ID, you can update that particular suppliers only. So in case of multiple suppliers, we have to use the for loop and within the for loop, we have to update the suppliers one by one. So I'll go to the OIC and search for for each. Now here we have to provide the repeating element from the response of the REST API where we are getting the suppliers. So I will expand the get suppliers from ERP and under the response wrapper, we can see the items, which is the repeating element. So I'll drag this into the repeating element. Now you can see one default current element is generated, which is F0 underscore items. So we can use this element to get the supplier one by one and update those suppliers. Now I'll save. Now within the for each, I will add the rest action to update the suppliers. So I'll search for REST and I'll select REST002. Here I'll provide the name as update suppliers. And then we have to provide the endpoint that I'll copy from the update one supplier REST API page. And you can see the HTTP method will be patch. So that is why instead of get, we have to select patch. Now I'll go down, then I'll Check the checkbox of request and response payload both and continue. Now as the supplier ID is a number field, so instead of string, we have to choose integer. Now continue. Now go down. Here we have to provide the request payload. So I'll click on the inline and in the request payload, we have to mention all the supplier attributes that we want to update for the supplier. Now in this video, we will update only one attribute and that is supplier type. To find the exact name, I will go to the REST API page and go down. Under the request body, you can find all the supplier attributes that you want to update. You can see just after the supplier, supplier type is there. So we have to provide this attribute in the request payload. So I have provided this in JSON format. Now I will continue. Continue. Then we have to configure the response 
and for that I will click on the inline and the response payload is optional here. You can mention the attributes in the response payload that you want to display as a response and similar to request payload you can find the attributes of the response payload in the REST API page. So I'll go to the REST API page and if you go down you can find the response body and here you can see all the attributes that you can mention in the response body. Now I'll mention two attributes supplier ID and supplier type. You can see I have provided the attributes in JSON format. Now I'll continue, continue, finish. Now I'll go to the map of update suppliers and I will expand the template parameters. Now under the template parameters you can see supplier ID and that will be used to update any supplier. And from the sources the supplier ID I will find under the F0 underscore items and that is generated from the repeating element of for each. You can see within the items all the attributes are there so I will map supplier ID to the supplier ID. Now I will expand request wrapper. And here we have to provide the attribute supplier type that we will update for all the suppliers. So I'll click on the create target node and I'll provide the hard coded value as contractor. So that means all the suppliers that will get in the integrations, the supplier type of all those suppliers will be updated as contractor. Now I'll save and validate. Now as we are updating multiple suppliers within the for each one by one so it may happen that for any particular supplier the update will be failed due to any REST API issue. So in that case we will skip that error and we will move forward to update the next suppliers. So for that we have to add the fault handler for REST API that will handle any error due to REST API and instead of throwing the error and stop the process it will move forward to update the next set of suppliers and to do this we will add a scope within the for each. So I will click on the plus and search for scope. Now I will cut this invoke action with the map and paste it within the scope. Now I will click on the three dot of scope and under the fault handler I will choose AP invocation error rest. So this AP invocation error fault handler will be used to handle any kind of REST API error for any supplier. Now to track the error we can add notification or logger within the fault handler. So I will click on the plus and search for logger. Now in the logger message I will use a concat function and within the concat first of all I will provide the supplier name that I will find under F0 underscore items. So I will drag supplier here and then I will provide comma and after that I will provide the error detail. So for that we have to expand the current fault object and then under error details we have one element instance. So I will drag this after the comma. In this element the error reason are stored. So now whenever we are getting some error for any supplier due to REST API issue, then in the logger we will get supplier name with the error reason. Now I will save. Now I will activate and run the integration. So I will activate the integration in debug mode and now I will run the integration. Here we have to provide the file path with file name to store the file in a specific SFTP location. Now I will click on the run button. Now you can see the integration is completed successfully. And if you see under for each 50 iterations are there that means we have total 50 suppliers. Now we will check the output file in the SFTP location. Now I will open the file. You can see 51 lines are there including the header that means 50 suppliers are there. And due to that we can see the 50 iterations are there. But you can see the red symbol that means all the suppliers are not updated correctly. So if I expand this. We can see all the iterations are there and if I go down so under the iteration 13 we are getting some error. I will expand this. So we are getting the error in invoke update suppliers and the fault handler is handling that error and if we see the logger 
we can see this is the supplier name and the error reason is this supplier profile is locked for editing as profile change request is pending approval so that means due to some data issue for this supplier we are unable to perform the update operation through rest api if i go down further then we can see we are getting the error again in iteration 31 so i'll expand and i'll check the logger so we are getting the same issue for this supplier as well now i'll go down so we have checked that apart from these two suppliers all the iterations are successful now if we expand any successful iteration like iteration 50 and go down then we can see invoke update suppliers is successful and if we view the message received by invoke update suppliers we can see this is the supplier id that we are passing for the supplier and the supplier type is contractor now to check the response we have to view the message processed by invoke update supplier section so i'll click on the view payload and we can see we are getting the response with the two attributes which are supplier id and supplier type and as in this response the supplier type is contractor that means the supplier type is correctly updated so this is how we can use the update operation of rest api within the for each so although the two suppliers are failed the iterations were not stopped as we are using the fault handler of the REST API. So this is it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Share this video within your circle. If you have any doubts or any suggestions, put that in the comment section and do subscribe our channel. Thank you.